I've been asked to do an example of a solution using the Navier-Stokes equations. And the Navier-Stokes equations are the ones that are the microscopic momentum balance for Newtonian fluids. So the problem I'm going to do is flow down an inclined plane, which we did in class, and it's this one. If I were to write the problem out in words like on an exam or a problem in the homework, it would read like this. Calculate the steady state velocity profile for the flow of an incompressible Newtonian fluid down an inclined plane. You may assume the plate is wide and that end effects may be neglected. The purpose of calculating this steady state velocity profile would be to calculate something like the average velocity per unit width or the force on the plate, which we dealt with in a, at other times. So because this problem asks for the velocity profile itself, for the distribution of the velocity in space, we need to use the microscopic balance. So the microscopic balance is the Navier-Stokes equation. which is in a vector tensor form. The inertial terms, which are on the left-hand side, the pressure forces, the viscous forces, and the gravity forces. This is written in Gibbs notation. And it helps us to see the structure of the problem. If we want to actually solve the problem, we need this equation written in various coordinate systems and we have this handout that we use in class to calculate the Navier-Stokes and the continuity equation in various coordinate systems. So this handout will be very um, useful in our problem solving. This is the first side and this is the second. So on the first side we have the continuity equation with the microscopic mass balance and we have the Cauchy momentum equation which is used for non-Newtonian fluids and we have the Navier-Stokes equations on the back side. So the first step to solving the flow down an inclined plane will be the continuity equation or the microscopic mass balance. So the mass balance is called the continuity equation and we have it here on our handout on the first side. I hope you can read this and we are going to simplify the continuity equation for the coordinate system that interests us which is going to be a rectangular coordinate system in this problem. So we've chosen our coordinate system here. The flow is in the z direction. It varies in the x. So we know that the velocity that we're looking for, vx, vy, vz in this coordinate system is all in the z direction. So vx is zero, Vy is zero and Vz is not zero. That's the one we're really looking for. So this is an important fact that we're going to use in simplifying the continuity equation. We're also going to use the fact that the flow is steady, that the fluid is incompressible, and later when we simplify the Navier-Stokes equation we'll use this um, fact that it's wide and that we're neglecting the end effects. So turning now to the continuity equation, in our Cartesian coordinates, it's listed here. Let me zoom in on that a little bit. So here's the continuity equation in Cartesian coordinates, x, y, z coordinates. And we can simplify this equation uh, by using those facts that are related to our problem. We have a steady problem, steady state problem, that tells us that the time derivatives of anything are zero. We have an incompressible fluid, so the density does not change, and all of these terms have density derivatives in them. And in addition, we know that Vx is zero and Vy is zero. So let me collect all that information and get our final um, result. We have at steady state anything with a time derivative goes to zero. For an incompressible fluid the density is constant 
So any derivative of the density is zero. And we already took unidirectional flow, Vx, Vy are zero. All of those things together allow us from the continuity equation here to deduce that this last remaining term, dvz, dz equals zero. So the mass balance gets us to this conclusion that dvz, dz is zero. We now turn to the momentum balance, the Navier-Stokes equation. And these are our Navier-Stokes equations. And again, we'll choose the Cartesian coordinates. And we'll do the same kind of simplification. Okay, there's my continuity, uh, excuse me, Navier-Stokes. And we have those same facts. So where um, at steady state, we can get rid of all three of these time derivatives. Uh, because Vx and Vy are zero, everything with a Vx and everything with a Vy is zero. And because from the previous mass balance result, we know dvz dz is zero, this is zero. Now, over here is a second derivative of velocity with respect to z, and that's also zero. Since dvz dz is zero, certainly the z derivative of that is zero. So you see, with just those few facts, our equation has simplified greatly, and we can now collect those terms and find out that for this first component, the x component, we get that 0 equals minus dp dx plus rho gx. So we'll have to figure out the rho gx in a minute. y component, 0 equals, nothing on the left, minus dp dy plus mu times 0 plus rho gy. And the z component, 0 equals, nothing on the left is remaining, minus dp dz plus, oh, these has some terms, the second derivative of vz with respect to x, second derivative of vy, excuse me, vz with respect to y, plus g z times rho. So just by saying steady state flow only in the z direction of an incompressible fluid, we've already simplified our problem considerably. The next step will be to write the gravity vector in our coordinate system so we can simplify these terms and then begin to um, simplify, look at every, all of our remaining terms and see what additional simplifications we may or may not be able to make. I'll continue with this problem in a subsequent video.